What is up everybody? Welcome back to AV Astronomy. Aaron here and if this is your first time watching, thanks for stopping by and checking out the channel. Today's video wanted to do some more imaging with the Skywatcher Star Adventurer. I've only used it a couple times but I've had some really good success already with with that mount and I love how it's pretty much a grab-and-go setup. Um, the convenience of that is <laughs> Is just really nice to be able to get everything set up and ready to go and pretty much in about like 10 minutes is really really nice so not to mention when you're doing wide field imaging and I'll be using the Canon uh, 100 millimeter f 2.8 lens you at this time of year it's a, that's an excellent focal length range really anything wide field you could go super wide 18 24 50 with a DSLR right now aimed at pretty much any part of the Milky Way and you're going to get some really really cool images. I'm going to be focusing tonight on the Seder region um, which you can see right here and this is how it would fit in the framing with my Canon 77D and the 100 millimeter macro lens. So a couple things I'm going to go over of course getting this set up and ready to go is, is pretty straightforward. I did a video earlier on setting polar alignment with this setup. Um, there, there were a couple things though I'd like to mention. Uh, I, whether you're using the L bracket or not, you have to use the wedge. Someone had pointed that out to me and I failed to mention that in the previous video. So thank you uh, for mentioning that. Also, there was a comment regarding using a ball head on the L bracket. Um, I think at you know longer focal lengths, some you know around and I'm not sure where this number is. This would be a great study. If, if someone out there has already done this, please post the info. At what point does focal length become a factor when using a ball head on an EQ mount, on this, on a portable tracker type mount? Um, I've used them before with 50 millimeter focal length and of course with the 100 millimeter and have gotten really good results. Nice round stars, good overall result. Um, but apparently the tracking is hindered by using that type setup. So tonight I'm going to experiment and I'm going to use the L bracket without the ball head. I'm going to have the camera directly mounted to that L bracket and use it that way. So when you're using a portable setup like this, you get the convenience of ease of use, ease of setup, and a very forgiving image scale. Okay. Um, if you're using a 50 millimeter lens or even a 100 millimeter lens like I am, I mean, I think the, the image scales something like four, almost four arc seconds per pixel, which is very forgiving. And it's, of course, even higher with a uh, wider focal length. And so you've got some room for error, you know. You don't have to be perfectly precise on everything. Precision helps, and, and it will give you longer exposures and better, better results. But I think with this setup, you can have just a fair alignment and if you're doing less than minute long exposures or you might even go minute and a half without guiding and still get solid results. If you can do guiding, I, I recommend it. I do plan on eventually getting an auto guiding setup. But for now, to have, I want to explore more into this grab and go setup, okay? Because convenience and just ease of use and being able to set up and break down, especially when traveling or, you know, and trying to pack light, it, it really is helpful and beneficial and it just makes your life easier, right? And if you can get awesome results with minimalist setup, why not go for that, right? So that's what I'm going to be focusing on today. So that is the game plan for tonight. I will see you guys later this evening when it's time to image. Okay, so for tonight's setup, as you can see here, I have got the dew heater on and the dew heater controller right there. That's the Thousand Oaks 
Got that from a Gina Astro, I believe. And then, of course, I got my intervalometer. So those are the accessories I'm using on tonight's imaging session. I've got it all polar aligned. And this time, I'm going without the ball head. I have the camera just attached directly to the L bracket. So for the imaging plan this evening, uh, the plan was to do 60 second exposures and I'm just going to try and crack out as many as I can. I think the moon stays down to about 2.30 tonight so that should give me hopefully about 200 plus subs which would be great. Um, stacking that many subframes will should yield a very clean image with little to no noise and while I don't have dithering going on I do read I do check polar alignment about every 30 subframes and I do find I have to make some small adjustments so it's kind of like a mini dither when you make those slight adjustments to the composition so I think that helps a little bit as well but that's it guys it's a simple plan with a simple setup tonight and that's that's really it uh, hopefully I'll have a good image here to show you guys at the end of the video and so one thing about this intervalometer um, you need to use a self timer mode on the camera when you do the bulb setting with the mirror lockup because that intervalometer is not going to do the uh, the trigger properly it's only going to trigger it once and it it will think that it's taking the picture when in essence it's just locking up the mirror so do a two second self timer on your camera with the bulb setting at whatever, whatever aperture you're going to be using and then use the intervalometer as you normally would putting in the number of subframes you're going to take how long each subframe is going to be the interval time between each and and that's it the the rest is handled on its own so without any further delay i'm going to go ahead and get this session started and i will show you guys the end result here shortly all right, so I'd say I had a pretty successful evening last night imaging the Seder region with my Star Tracker and the Canon 100mm f2.8 macro lens. My strategy was to take advantage of the fact that at that focal length, you have a very forgiving image scale. So while auto guiding is always encouraged, and I, I always encourage to auto guide, it can't hurt to auto guide, but at this image scale, it really doesn't make that much of a difference, if any when your image scale is four or five arc seconds per pixel. Um, I found that I only had to cull out one frame for every 20 that I took due to star elongation that was from error, periodic error in the mount itself. But all the other stars are nice and tight and round at a 200% crop, so no problems there. And of course that was imaging at 60 seconds at ISO 3200. And if you're wondering why I use ISO 3200, I've got another video here called uh, ISO Variance and Why It Matters. And that'll go into explaining why higher ISOs with certain cameras, depending on the camera, can actually help you out. So check that out if you haven't seen that one already. So if you're new into the hobby or even if you've been doing this for a while and you want an easy to use, simple to set up astrophotography rig, I can't think of a, a better setup than a DSLR with a fairly wide angle lens and one of these star trackers. It's a great way to get into it and, and I've been doing this for almost a year and a half now and I gotta tell you I'm gonna be doing a lot more of this this summer. I had a, a lot of fun with this setup. It's ease of use and the results I'm getting from it uh, have really impressed me so I plan on doing several big wide regions like the North American and Pelican Nebula um, and maybe the Lagoon and Trifid all in one frame uh, just to just to keep working with this system here. And judging by the subframes um, from my previous shoot with Ro Ophiuchi and the Seder region, I didn't notice a whole lot of difference. And as far as the quality of the subframes, one was of course without the ball head attached and the other one with the row of Fiocchi, I did use a ball head. Um, I, I don't know that at this focal length range, it makes that much of a difference. I think, you know, as you get up there in the 200, 250 millimeter focal length ranges and, and longer, you would definitely want to stay away from using a ball head, but um, I'm just not seeing where that's a problem at this focal length. So I will say, if you if you have that setup and you have a ball head and you're using a wider focal length go for it i mean i'm getting good results and if it does add to tracking error i'm not seeing it i mean 
I'm zooming in as far as I can on these uh, these raw images and not seeing any trailing of stars. So, and these are 45 second to 60 second subframes. So that's just something to keep in mind. So basically in summary, with this setup that I'm using, what I can tell so far in the couple of imaging sessions that I've had with this camera and that lens and the Star Adventure, it's a great portable rig. Um, that does not require an auto guider at these sub exposure lengths and at the ISO I use to achieve that. And um, so, yeah, I'd say if, you, if you've got the camera already and, and some lenses like that, and you're looking for a way to get into this hobby, get, get a Star Tracker, the iOptron, the Star Adventure, and, and go for it, man. Um, I think you'll be really, really surprised with the results you'll get from this. Well, guys, that's it for today. Appreciate you watching and stopping by, and I hope you got something out of it, and this helps you on your astrophotography journey. And as always, if you are interested in any of the gear that I use or that I recommend, I've got some links down in the description that will help get you started on the right foot. Also, if you ever have any questions, concerns, or ideas with regard to astrophotography, things you, you just want to know a little bit more about, put them in the comment section, and I'll do the best I can to address those for you. And as always, thanks for watching. And until next time, clear skies.